So I'm Robert Jaffe. I'm from MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So I was, I was reporting on a study that was done by the American Physical Society and the Material Research Society on what we call energy critical elements, which are a series of chemical elements from that periodic table that are used in new technologies that might have the chance to really change in a profound way the way we harvest, transmit, store, and use energy. And this addresses really some of the great challenges of the 21st century, whether we can uh, supply the energy we need, whether we can be independent from political uh, to's and fro's in foreign countries, and whether we can stem the growth of atmospheric carbon dioxide and the uh, climate change that comes from it. Unfortunately, most people don't realize the way that they're dependent on these materials. Uh, your, your cell phone, which I guess everybody has a cell phone now, but a modern um, cell phone contains somewhere upwards of 60 different chemical elements. And uh, everyone has its own special use, whether it's a phosphor that makes the screen glow in an appropriate way, or whether it's a tiny bit of uh, rare earth magnet that makes a disk drive work. Um, these things are all hidden from us, and that's one of the reasons why we think uh, raising the consciousness about these problems is so important. For example, uh, many of these things, they're not destroyed in their use. It's not, they don't get burned up and, and diluted. They're exactly as useful when you're finished with your cell phone as when you buy it. And yet the recycling uh, of cell phones and the recycling of other high-tech uh, objects that contain these elements is almost unheard of. So there's a tremendous opportunity for people to become aware of the products and start treating them as though they're precious. I mean, they are literally rarer than gold, and yet they end up uh, in a trash heap or in the back of your socks drawer instead of being appropriately recycled. A lot of these materials are very important in solar energy technologies. And if we're ever going to harvest the most abundant and, and most dependable source of energy on the planet, we're going to have to learn how to use these materials in a, uh, a sustainable way. There are 90 elements and they occur helter-skelter around the world and no country has the possibility of being completely independent. China, which you've heard so much about with respect to the rare earths being the, the local, right now the source of rare earths, uh, there are several elements which they have to import from the United States. Beryllium, for example, uh, they're completely dependent on the United States for beryllium. And generally speaking, this international trade uh, works to everybody's advantage. Uh, they, we can produce it more cheaply than they do, and uh, we sell it to them, and they sell something back to us. So the United States should, should supply the things that it can supply in an economic and environmentally conscientious way. There's no question about that. I mean, we do need these things out of the ground. Even the staunchest environmentalist realizes that to build solar voltaic panels and to build wind turbines, you have to get the material from somewhere. Uh, but there is no advantage in a country trying to be materials independent. Um, all it does is raise the cost to everyone. Um, for example, we import platinum from South Africa to use in uh, catalytic converters on our cars. And if we tried to produce all that platinum in the United States, it would cost us, it would cost the car manufacturers, the consumers, uh, far more than it costs now because uh, South Africa happens to be blessed with a particularly rich and accessible uh, vein of platinum. There, right now uh, in Congress, there are several bills that are working their way through committees that w would support the objectives of raising information ab uh, about the resources and uh, supporting research, basic research into the use of these materials and also developing recycling. And uh, these bills are really not very partisan. They're supported on both sides of the aisle, but they're hung up in the difficulty of moving anything through Congress at the moment. So uh, if you want to call your congressman, it should be a great subject.